Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, this is the first interview that I have lined up in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. And I have with me, Eric. Um, the name of your channel is actually Eric the Red. And Eric is a third generation Mexican American. So I've actually known Eric for a few months now, well online at least. Um, you live in Texas and as y'all know, I am in Virginia. So. I forget how it was that you found my channel, but we just started talking and we talk pretty regularly now. Yeah, and yeah, so I wanted to get your perspective because I think you have an interesting perspective or experience being that you are, you know, third generation Hispanic American. And um, I feel like we don't hear you guys' side of the story too much. I think usually when, um, the topic of Latino Americans comes up, it focuses more on either like, you know, recent immigrants or like first generation Americans, you know, such as myself. And, um, you know, there seems to sometimes be kind of like this debate about, you know, are you guys, can you guys still really even claim your, you know, ancestral lands or are you just American at this point? And I think when it comes to the case of like, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, and Cubans, it's actually not uncommon to see third, fourth, fifth generation descendants because, um, you know, y'all's particular groups have been here for so long already, you know, um, compared to Dominicans where they really didn't start coming heavily into the U.S. until the 80s and 90s. So, um, well, first, I just want to start off and um, allow you the chance to just kind of tell the audience who you are. And you do um, have a channel where you occasionally post content. So just kind of give us a little background about yourself. All right, well, my name is Eric. I am from South Texas. I live like 20 minutes from the border. Um, I'm third generation Mexican American. So both of my parents were born here and my grandparents were born here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Okay. And um, so, yeah, like I said, you, you have a channel. Um, it's not really dedicated to like Mexican topics, but you do like kind of just random little things um, like toy unboxing. Um, I know you told me you're part of the, the toy community and um, you try different candies from like, like Asian candies and stuff like that. So yeah, go ahead. and let us know. Um, So I am like recently I started being in the toy community. I buy a lot of like, collectibles from Asia mm -hmm. and I'm really like into trying different candies. So I've tried candies from Korea, China, Japan, um, Mexico. Yeah. And like from different cultures, I've even tried candies from um, Jewish culture as well. Mm, okay. Okay. Is there one that you would say you prefer the most? Like um, for candies from a particular country? I really liked the candy from Mexico, and I actually really liked the candy from um, Jewish companies as well. Okay. Okay, interesting. Okay, so um, I want to kind of get into your family background. So you said that both your parents and your grandparents were born here. Do you know much about your great-grandparents or like what area in Mexico they were from on either side? Um, yeah, I know a little bit about them. I never met them because my family is really old. My parents had me late. My okay. dad was like already 40 and mm. my grandparents had my parents late. So they're a lot older. Okay. okay. But my great grandparents, they were from Northern Mexico, um, specifically the state of Tamaulipas and I believe three of them were born in Matamoros, Mexico, and one of them was from San Fernando, Mexico, which is also in Tamaulipas. Okay. Okay. And so have you um, ever talked to your parents kind of about their experience being second generation Mexican Americans, or did they, uh, would you say that they are pretty how can I say, attached to Mexican culture? Or would you say that they're more Americanized? Um, they're very Americanized at this point. Um, mm -hmm. My dad's first language was actually Spanish, even though he was born here. But um, my mother, she's a lot more Americanized. Um, she actually, 
she knows Spanish somewhat, but not that fluent okay. compared to my dad. And they also, um, they moved away to the Dallas area. And so they had to kind of assimilate even more because down here in South Texas, it's very much mixed. So you can still maintain a lot of your Mexican culture mm. um, in South Texas while being in the US because majority of people here are Mexican. But when they moved away, that's when I believe they got more Americanized. Okay. Okay. So you bring up an interesting point in that sometimes just the the culture of the area can actually help you to maintain some of that ancestral culture or whatever. So in your personal experience, um, so you how, how would you say that you identify? Do you say that you're Mexican-American or you, do you just kind of consider yourself American at this point? Like, what, what would you call yourself? I identify as Mexican-American, mm -hmm. as okay. just third generation Mexican-American. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you feel like you've ever been made to feel like you're less Mexican or whatever because you're more far removed or because um, I think you, you don't speak Spanish really, right? Okay, so, and that's another big thing, which I've made videos about this before because there's a lot of conversation regarding that where it's like your Latin card or Hispanic card kind of gets taken away if you don't know Spanish. And some people are really like, you know, they, they're really self-conscious about that. So have you ever felt weird about the fact that you don't speak Spanish? And I don't know, feel, have you ever been made to feel like less than, you know, somebody else that does speak Spanish? Um, well, for me, almost all of my cousins, we don't speak Spanish. None of us do. And mm. we're all third generation. So, and many of my friends growing up also didn't speak Spanish. In fact, the majority of my friends growing up, even though we were all um, Mexican American, we didn't speak Spanish. So um, not really, but at the same time, because sometimes people confuse me as like a white American, people sometimes think that I'm not like Mexican or Hispanic or because I can't speak Spanish that I can't really prove that I am Hispanic yeah. or Mexican. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, sometimes that's more of a problem though I feel with people who may look more European or may look more African mm -hmm. because Spanish sometimes is the only way to justify those certain people as being Hispanic. Yeah. Yeah. And um, because I, you told me recently that someone had told you that it's OK if you don't speak Spanish because you look white, like I guess yeah. white American, which I just I find it kind of odd. And I like I told you that would be like somebody coming up to me and being like, well, it's OK if you don't speak Spanish because you look black anyway. You know, yeah, which, same thing. you know, it's just kind of weird <laughs> because like, OK, people of all races can speak Spanish. Like Hispanic, as everybody knows, is not a race. So you can be black, white, mixed, indigenous looking, whatever, and speak Spanish or not speak Spanish, but it doesn't make you any less Hispanic, you know? Yeah. I know some people feel a type of way about the words Hispanic and stuff. But anyway, for the sake of this conversation, we're just saying Hispanic. So um, yeah, that was like a very interesting comment that they made to you. And, um, and you've, mentioned before how you are you look a lot whiter than some of your other family members so do you feel like you were ever treated differently because of that whether good or bad either by your family or like other people in your area like how do people receive you or treat you because of that well i can't say that people have treated me worse because of it because there's no way that being white, like lighter complected can cause bad things to happen to you, especially in this country. Mm -hmm. So I can't see how there would be any negative aspects of it. But as far as how people treated me, um, I would say the people who may have treated me differently because of it are Mexican people actually from Mexico and not so much third generation mm -hmm. Mexican people. Oh, really? Yeah. Why do you think that is? I think that um, 
with third generation Mexican Americans, they just don't care as much. And mm-hmm. I think skin tone may matter a little bit more to people who are maybe less acculturated or assimilated into American society as far as Mexican people. Okay. So you feel like the the native Mexicans, um, they still hold on a bit more to like that colorist mindset? Yes. Mm. And the person who told me that it's okay if I don't speak Spanish was someone from Mexico as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. So Mm -hmm. from what you have observed, would you say that there seems to be division as far as, you know, race or color among most Mexicans? Because another, okay. So what I I see like two things kind of going on with the Latin community in general so you have this whole like you know afro latino movement going on with like the more african descent uh latinos and them really claiming their blackness but i also see something similar happening with um like mexicans and some other countries that have a lot more higher like indigenous populations and they are now claiming their native indigenous ancestry a lot more and it seems like at least from comments i've seen online people have like mixed feelings about that. Some people are for it, but then I see other people being like, okay, y'all are acting like y'all some Aztecs or whatever, like you're not. <laughs> so I don't know, what have you observed when it comes to that? Or do people in your area, are they kind of following that? I don't want to call it a trend, but like, are they going along with that as well? From what I've seen, no. People in my area do not identify with any like, indigenous or even white kind of identities. They just kind of see themselves as Mexican and that's it. Okay, mm-hmm. That's what I've seen. But online, I've seen it more so. But I actually, I haven't seen anybody I know personally identify with like any indigenous heritage, except for mm-hmm. maybe just one person, honestly. Really? Hmm. So you feel like most Mexicans or at least the ones that you've come across, their sense of pride is mostly just in being Mexican, not necessarily the the ethnic nature of their identity. Yeah, I believe so. Just because most Mexicans may not even know what they are because Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't know exactly what I am unless I took a DNA test because I could say that I am a white white Mexican just by how I look. But if you look at my family and I've showed you pictures, yeah. they're, they're not white or at yeah. least not close to my skin tone. So mm-hmm. it's hard for me in that way. Cause it's like, what would I identify as? Right. Yeah. I, yeah, I remember you, you showed me pictures of your brothers and your parents and they're definitely Brown. Like they look like your browner, typical Mexicans, mestizo Mexicans. And you're like the the lightest one out of all of them. So yeah, I can definitely see how that might be a little confusing as far as how you should identify, because like you said, you could just identify as white because you are white passing, Mm -hmm. you know? And so with that being said, how do you feel about the conversations some Latinos have these days as far as white Latinos and racism? Like, how can I say? Like a lot of people feel that white Latinos feel superior and that they look down on, you know, brown and black Latinos. Like, how do you feel when you hear those type of comments? Like, do you ever take any offense to that? Or do you just kind of feel like, well, that's, not me, I don't care. Like, how do you feel about that? I don't take offense to it because um, I don't personally have those types of prejudices, but mm-hmm. I agree with what they're saying because a lot of rich, wealthier Mexicans are white. Um, a lot of wealthier Mexican people do come across, do cross into the US to shop or to um, eat, mm-hmm. and they're very white looking. They could pass as just any white American. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are much wealthier. And so they do have a lot of like elitist type of attitudes toward poor and more um, darker skinned Mexicans. So when they say that white Mexicans are racist, they're pretty much right. Mm. I feel, I feel like they are. 
Mm. Yeah, I was just listening to uh, another interview earlier today with the YouTuber that also interviewed a Mexican. And um, the Mexican girl said something about how, like, even in Mexico today, the people that hold the most power and status are the descendants of those Spaniards that went to Mexico. So they are mainly white. But I mean, I think that's something you see throughout Latin America. I mean, you know, the effects of colonization haven't completely gone away. So you do see that in a lot of areas. Okay. Um, That to me, it's true. Um, They do, the Spanish elite rules even to this day, even though it's a minority. It's kind of like flipped where in the US white people make up the majority, but in Mexico they make up a minority, but they hold the most power. Mm. It's kind of flipped. Okay, gotcha. So um, so assuming that you do have a substantial amount of European ancestry, the other kind of, um, I don't know, it's kind of taboo at times, but another conversation is like when people talk about our European ancestry as Latinos and people call it um, our APE blood. I don't want to say because YouTube might demonetize me, but you know, they call it that and you know, our colonizer blood and this and that, which is true to an extent. But um, do you, how do you feel about when people say things like that? Like, do you feel about any type of way about claiming your European ancestry? Since like I said, you are a more European descent Latino. Like, do you feel any type of way about it at all? Um, When I was younger, yes, I would feel bothered when people would say like, oh, you're not Mexican, you're white. But um, now that I'm, you know, more educated on Mexican history, I don't take offense to it. I understand that when I look in the mirror, I see a white person because I am white or look white. Mm -hmm. And so I would feel like it would be um, illogical to deny any European ancestry that I have when it's clearly there. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's another thing that I don't know, I guess before maybe it wasn't so much of a conversation among Hispanics because, you know, historically that is what most Hispanics or a lot of them aspired to be. They aspired to be closer to whiteness or you know, being getting closer to being Spanish or whatever. But now there's been also like a, a pushback from some Latinos where it's like, nah, I'm not claiming my colonizer blood and all that. So that's why I wanted to get your perspective on that being that you are more or whiter. Um, personally, you know, I don't have an issue claiming my European side. It's a part of who I am. Uh, although I look the way that I look. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't personally have an issue with it. But um, okay. So, of aside from the racial aspect, so culturally, um, are there any aspects of Mexican culture that you would say you're you're pretty familiar with, or that you really enjoy or like? Be it food, music, or anything about Mexican culture. Um, I would say the main thing would probably be food. Um. I eat Mexican food all the time. Uh, Mm -hmm. My mom makes Mexican food all the time. And, you know, there's a lot of Mexican restaurants where I live. So there's not going to be a week that goes by and I didn't eat Mexican food. Mm -hmm. But I am pretty disconnected from, like, um, I guess, television shows from Mexico and, like, singers from Mexico. I don't really listen to any or watch any Mexican TV or know a lot of Mexican artists. So in that way, I am pretty disconnected. Mm -hmm. And also um, when it comes to holidays and celebrations, um, today is Mexican Independence Day. And I I never celebrate that. Like Mm -hmm. it's a surprise. I didn't even know it was Mexican Independence Day today. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't even know. Oh, wow. So in that way, I'm pretty disconnected. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I know that um yesterday um was like the independence day of like five different countries. So that's why they started Hispanic Heritage Month on the 15th. And I remember that the 16th was Mexican. There was another one on like the 21st or something. I forget which country. But okay. So yeah, the food. Yeah, I mean, I I like Mexican food too, honestly. And you can 
definitely tell the difference between like authentic Mexican food and like some of these like little knockoff more, I don't know, commercial Mexican food joints. But yeah, I, I definitely like it. And I worked at a Mexican restaurant for two years when I was younger. And that's where I learned to eat spicy because um, Dominicans, eh, some like spicy, but for the most part, most of our food isn't really spicy. So I, you know, I don't really care for spicy food when I was like younger, but once I started working there, I got used to eating jalapenos like straight and, you know, yeah, my, my spicy meter definitely went up after that. Um, as far as like Mexican TV and stuff, well, I did grow up watching Mexican telenovelas. So I am quite familiar with a lot of them and I recognize a lot of the actors that have been you know, acting for years because, um, you know, even though we're Dominican, I feel like all of Latin America watched Mexican novelas. I'm not yeah. sure why that is, but it's like everybody watched them, you know, so I definitely grew up watching some of them. Um, as far as the music, I am familiar with some Mexican artists because, you know, there's some that my, my dad and some of my uncles would listen to. So, um, yeah, but I mean, Mexico is so, so big. It's such a big country and it's so diverse. And I'm sure it's very diverse in terms of culture within the country and music and things like that. So um, there's, I feel like there's definitely a lot to learn and explore, you know, if we really want to get into Mexican history. Yeah. And even like um, the food is different depending on which part of Mexico you're at as well. Mm -hmm. It's okay. drastically different. Um, Mexican food from Tamaulipas is very similar to what Tex-Mex is, but in Baja, okay. California, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. And I personally, it's completely different to me. I don't think it's really that similar. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Tex-Mex, that's another, how would you describe that. I mean, I've always heard that term. And when I think of Tex-Mex, the first thing that comes to mind is Selena. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but yeah, like that's like the first thing I think of. I think of her. So would you say that's kind of like its own little thing or own little culture within a culture type of situation? I would say yes. Um, when it comes to food, there is some differences. Um, for I guess the biggest one would be like what type of tortillas they make. So mm -hmm. in Mexico, traditionally use um, corn tortillas, but in Tex-Mex, it's flour tortillas. Oh, okay. And just certain things like nachos, that's more of a Tex-Mex type of thing okay. as well. Mm -hmm. So okay. certain dishes kind of like originated in different places, but like breakfast tacos, that's kind of more Tex-Mex as well. Okay. Okay, gotcha. So would you say that the non-Mexicans in your area, um, would you say that they kind of, I don't know, have maybe assimilated a little bit into Mexican culture since it's the predominant culture there? Yes, um, absolutely, actually. Um, I see white people speaking Spanish. I see mm -hmm. um, actually fluent Spanish. Mm. And... Um, I see Asians living down here do that. Um, I've seen black people also do that here, but with the white people, especially they do assimilate to where even they even use certain, like, I guess, slang terms as oh, well. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So um, would you say that the Mexicans there, are they pretty integrated with the other groups? Like do they, I don't know, they get along with certain groups or more, get along more with one versus the other? Or how do you see that in your area? I would say that the group that the Mexicans, I guess, here get along with the most is probably the Asians, mm -hmm. particularly the Filipinos. Um, I would say sometimes with Black people, um, you also have some Mexicans that do not like Black people. Mm -hmm. But, and I think that there may be the biggest type of divide with white people. Um, that kind of, to me, seems more on like a class basis with 
um, I guess wealthier Hispanic or Mexican people tend to get along with white people a little bit more or associate with them more mm. than the poorer ones. Okay. Okay, so those Mexicans are probably whiter themselves, right? Usually. Mm, okay. So yeah, that's that's interesting because um, you know, you do sometimes hear like you know, well, white Americans, regardless, they're going to see you as different, even if you're a quote unquote white Latino. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, I guess it, it depends. Um, Cause from what you're saying, it seems like, well, if you're a person of means or status, then I don't know, I guess they're okay with you. Um, based on my experience, I think that having lighter skin and being of a, I guess, higher, social class does help mm -hmm. but i've also seen white people down here that get along with everybody so mm -hmm. i can't say that it's it's pretty much on an individual basis but one thing i will say is that a lot of the white people down here they you know have a lot of mexican friends but a lot of white people down here are also trump supporters so mm. Um, I don't know yeah. what to think that. about that. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's interesting because I think a lot of Trump supporters, they're kind of on the whole like anti-immigration stuff, right? Like yeah. they don't, you know, they want the wall and all that. So yeah, that's, Makes that's me wonder. Yes, yes, definitely. Especially being so close to the border. You see you're how far from the border? Like 20 minutes. Wow, that's crazy. Like within an hour, I could be there. Yeah. Wow. Hmm, interesting. My grandma, she actually lives like down the street from the International Bridge. Hmm. Okay. So it was just right there. Yeah. Wow. It's that's really close. Crazy. Yeah. So I, I can see why then the, the Mexican culture is so prominent there. And I mean, technically, that was all part of Mexico. Historically, right? Yeah, Texas, and that was Mexico. The part of Texas that I'm at was actually one time its own country. Um, oh. At one point, it was its own little country. I forgot what it was called, but it was the Republic of like the Rio Grande Valley, something like that. Oh. But that was like a long time ago. But mm -hmm. yes, um, Mexican culture is very prevalent down here. My high school is like 90% Hispanic. So. Wow, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that we've talked about white people, <laughs> how do you feel about um, this idea of black and brown unity? Do you see that being a thing in Southern Texas or what do you think about the idea in general? I think that like, I think it could be a good thing. I could see why um, people would want it because I mean, I believe the black population in the U.S. is like 30 to 40 million. And then the Mexican population is around 37 million. And so there's power in numbers. And mm -hmm. we're both groups that have been historically discriminated against within this country. So I could see why people would want black and brown unity. Mm -hmm. But I think the problem is not with black people, but more with Hispanic people because Hispanic people sometimes are just as racist as white people. The only difference is that they're not the ones making discriminatory policies and laws. Yeah. That's the only difference that, mm -hmm. from what I've seen. Yeah. No, that's but, very true. Yeah. yeah. I, would, I support it though. I think that it's necessary and, um, I think any type of unity would be good because I think the end result could be better for both groups. But I like just people in my own family. There was a, there's a lot of racist people in my family. Mm. Um, people I went to school with were very racist. I actually um, when Obama was elected for his second term. I was a freshman in high school and there was a bunch of people outraged at my high school, both white and Mexican. Oh. So wow. I think that 
the idea of black and brown unity is good, but it's flawed because one part of that group is not for that type of unity, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I agree. Um, I think at this point, I think I just, I think it comes down more to like an individual choice. If you want to be down for it, whether you're, you know, black or Latino, um, you know, you see plenty of people on both sides. And um, yeah, I mean, it is unfortunate. Um, I don't know if it's that, I mean, besides just a flat out racism part, but it's sometimes I wonder, is it that people just can't look past the culture barriers or language barriers? Cause I don't know, I just kind of feel like we're all just humans at the end of the day. And, you know, if, I don't know, you could, like you said, there's strength in numbers. So if you could band together for to fight for a common cause, then I mean, why not? You know, that's kind of how, how I see it. But then people also ask, well, what does black and brown unity really mean? Are we talking about like a a political type of identity? Is it like a social thing? Like, what does that even mean? So I don't know, I guess there's different ways you can look at it because as far as I know, I don't think there's any like legit, really formal black and brown coalition right now. At least I don't I think don't so. Care. I yeah, I know historically there were attempts at creating that, like back in like the 60s and stuff or 70s, but I don't know of any right now. So. Well, I think even, um, like, I would, I'm not aware, but is there even like organizations for black and brown students for scholarships? Because I'm not aware of that. Mm -hmm. I do know that there is some organization for Mexican Americans and Native Americans, but I haven't seen anything related even on that level. So I think that it may be just a little bit too unofficial right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know, sometimes I feel, it seems like the tension just gets worse. I don't know. It's weird because like when this whole, you know, Black Lives Matter stuff broke out a few months ago, I actually saw a lot of Latinos and even Mexicans speaking in support of it. But then it seemed like somewhere along the way, it kind of started to shift back again. And now you're just seeing that kind of like people going at each other on both ends. And I don't know. It's just crazy. Sometimes I feel like, I don't know. I, I don't know if we're ever really going to come to a point in time in this country where people of multiple backgrounds or even just focusing on Latinos and, uh, uh, African Americans are really just gonna, I don't know, support each other and just get along. And I do know from the the black side that they sometimes, a lot of times, feel like you know they support everybody, but nobody supports them. And mm -hmm. then, you know, I remember um, I don't know if you followed the Shade Room. I know some of my followers do. Uh, they posted some some posts and like Mexicans and black people started going at it in the comments and. Yeah. I, I saw some Mexicans saying, well, stop killing our street vendors. And then the, the Black people were saying some response. So it's like, there's always going to be situations like that, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I think it just comes down to the individual and you make that conscious decision to support that or not, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is your um, experience with, with other Latin groups? Like, do you come across other um, non-Mexican Hispanics often, or um, I don't know, are you cool with any group in particular? Um, honestly, looking back, there was like one Cuban person at my high school. I don't even remember a Puerto Rican person. Certainly not anybody like Central American. Oh, there was like one girl. There's not a lot of diversity down here in that respect. So mm -hmm. literally there's, you don't really see a lot of other Hispanic groups. It's mainly just Mexicans. Um, mm -hmm. I made one Salvadorian friend in college, but that's like the first Salvadorian person that to my knowledge I've ever even met. Wow. That's so, so the opposite of me, cause they all over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah, and 
because I tried looking back. I'm like, there was no Dominican people in my school. There was no Colombian, yeah. no um, Venezuelan. Mm-hmm. It's just very limited. Yeah. In that respect. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so yeah, we had very opposite experiences. You were basically surrounded by your people, and I, I for me, it was the opposite. You know, I, I was not surrounded by many Dominicans apart from my family. Okay. Mm, okay, so I was going to ask you, well, what are your thoughts then on this concept of Latin unity? Because um, uh, that's another topic that's been kind of floating around, and people have mixed opinions on that as well. Um, there are some people that kind of feel like, what is the purpose? Um, you know, we're, we have all these different countries with different cultures, different ethnic mixes. So what's the point of trying to put us all into one box and make us all be like kumbaya, but then there's others that um, support it and um, feel like, I guess, bending together, kind of like kind of like with the black and brown unity, like, you know, strength in numbers. A lot of us have common interests or face similar things, at least here in the US. Um, so personally, I feel like that's a more feasible thing here within the US. I don't really see that being something most Hispanics back home would care about. Cause I think most Hispanics in their countries just care about their country and their people. But anyway, so I get my opinion. I'm supposed to be asking you, so what's your opinion on that? Um, I think that Latin unity, I think it's a good, I think it probably should be there. I honestly can't say what the current state of that is because I don't know a lot of people from other Hispanic groups. Yeah, But at the same time, it would be kind of difficult just because certain Hispanic groups tend to live in certain parts of the country. So like in Florida, there's a lot more um, Cubans versus okay. South Texas where practically nobody's Cuban. Yeah. And also with Dominicans, they're more so in the East Coast and not, you know, in the West. So yeah. it's going to be hard in that respect because without, I guess maybe social media would be the only way because we kind of all live in different parts of the country. Right. Or have a tendency to live in different parts. Yeah, no, you're well. right. You're right, yep. Yep, um, I think as far as Caribbean Latinos, they're either in the Northeast or down in like Florida, um, some in Atlanta, but yeah, definitely, yeah, I know when it comes to Mexicans, it's mainly like Texas, California, I mean, there's quite a few here in the DMV too. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, plus the US is it's a big country too. So, I mean, yeah. like you said, unless it's through social media, how, how do we unite and connect and form this, I don't know, one cohesive unit, you know? Yeah, and it, it's hard because um, different Hispanic countries have different um, ethnic kind of like compositions. Yeah. So, you know, people from like El Salvador tend to be a lot more indigenous than people from Cuba or mm -hmm. um, Argentinian people tend to be very European. Yeah. Compared to, you know, Puerto Ricans or Dominicans that have more African. So right. we're very different in that respect. And even like the way different Hispanic countries speak Spanish. It's very different. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, like, and, yeah, uh -huh. the different, I guess, slang terms, they yes. kind of vary as well. And the yeah, food. No, mm -hmm. That too. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely, despite our common language and there's, or in some cases common religion, maybe some customs too, there's definitely a lot of differences. And like you said, the the accents and like kind of, I don't know if I'll call them dialects, but like the slang and stuff is definitely very different. Like the way a, a Dominican talks compared to a Mexican, I mean, it's very different, yeah, very, very different. different. Or even when I hear um, certain Salvadorians talk, the ones that have like that very thick Salvadorian uh, accent, and a lot of them tend to speak with a lisp, I'm not sure why. <laughs> but um, yeah, sometimes I have to like, really pay attention because I, I almost can't understand them. You know, that's how, how distinct their accent is. So, I think 
the lisp sometimes that's kind of like their way to emulate spain oh oh sometimes it's like because they have they speak with that lisp they're more like spain or they speak proper spanish because they have that more kind of lisp sound that spain kind of has oh i never thought about that i've seen that with um a lot of mexicans especially upper class quote unquote mm -hmm. mexicans they tend to do that more okay oh interesting i never thought about that i, I just always wonder why do so many of y'all speak with a lisp <laughs> It is interesting because they, they seem to be more like, mm, I don't know what, like campesino, like kind of more country a little bit, or I would assume they're like from the country in their countries and they speak like that. But that, that's an interesting point. I never thought about that. Well, like for Texas, um, the Spanish that they teach here in Texas at the schools is oftentimes more of what they speak in Spain versus Mexico. And so oh, like the school Castellano, system, Castilian type Spanish? Oh. Like at my university, most people are Hispanic, yet we all, a lot of us have a lot of trouble in the Spanish classes here. Mm -hmm. And it's because they teach Castilian Spanish from Spain and not the Spanish that we speak. Mm -hmm. Because the Spanish in Texas that Mexican Americans speak is different from the Spanish that they even speak in Mexico, and so mm -hmm. it's it gets complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I've always kind of wondered that too. Like, why is some schools do that? Because nobody on this side of the world really speaks that type of Spanish, you know. Uh, I don't know, I mean, unless maybe you're like a recent descendant of a Spaniard or something, but most of us don't speak like that. So I can definitely see that why that would be confusing. Yeah. Something that I did want to talk about is like how some people kind of feel like I'm disconnected from my culture because I yeah. don't speak Spanish. Yeah. But um, I would say that disconnected really isn't the right word. It's more lo more like... I, because there's assimilation and then there's acculturation, I feel like that I've taken in a lot of American, I guess, culture, but it's not, I guess I've balanced it. Instead of kind of like taking away my Mexican culture or neglecting it, I've kind of balanced it out because, um, especially as I've gotten older. Mm -hmm. And so, um, what I'll do more often now is uh, like look up things about history of Mexico, look up, um, look up stuff about, you know, what's popular in Mexico, the sports, um, yeah. stuff like that. So recently I've engaged more in, I guess, Mexican media. Yeah. But um, I've balanced it instead of completely forgetting about my culture. Okay, well, that's good. Um, I mean, honestly, that's kind of my experience. Well, to an extent, like I grew up very um, like immersed in the culture, but I didn't know so much about like the history and stuff, um, Dominican history. And I've also balanced it out in the sense that like I grew up in the middle of two worlds, you know, my Dominican culture, but I also grew up, you know, being surrounded by American culture. Uh, specifically more Black American culture. That was what I've always kind of just uh, naturally drifted towards. So yeah, I mean, there was definitely that that balance for me um, where I, I don't know, I just kind of just bounced between both for most of my life. But in more recent years, I have taken on the initiative or to actually learn and research more about Dominican history and the historical background of many, many elements of the culture and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I can definitely relate to you in that aspect. I feel like learning the, the history and the people you come from and all that, it's really just part of like your own journey of self-discovery and it mm -hmm. helps you learn more about who you are. You know, like, what do I come from? Who do I come from? Why do we do the things that we do, you know? So I feel like, yeah, that's great. That's good that you um, 
decided to do that despite people being like, oh, you're disconnected or whatever crap they may say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not that hard. I mean, the internet, it's right there. And yeah, I've taken courses. Um, I took Mexican American studies in my undergrad. Oh, okay. so, nice. Yeah. So I've taken the initiative, yeah. but when I was younger, I didn't really because little kids don't worry about stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. That's good to hear. Um, hopefully more, you know, further generation Hispanic Americans will do the same. I mean, I know there's a few that they just don't care at this point. I have seen that too. They're just pretty much, I'm American. You know, that's all they really care about. But I think most Hispanic Americans have some interest in kind of learning about their, the culture, you know, that they descend from. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Okay. Well, um, that was pretty much all the questions I had. So um, I want to thank you again for coming onto my channel, for having this discussion with me. This is kind of like my, my Kickstarter interview for the month. If anyone wants to check out um, Eric Thread's channel, I'll leave the link to his channel. I've kind of, kind of, um, I guess, softened my social media presence just because of my school. Mm -hmm. Because they kind of don't want us to be too controversial on yeah. social media. Mm -hmm. But yes, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah, I'm bare I have Twitter, but I'm like barely on there. I still I don't know why Twitter just seems difficult to me. I don't know what it is. I don't know. But then again, I was like, I'm back, I'm trying to juggle YouTube and my like I have like three Instagram pages <laughs> and then I have my Facebook page, which by the way, everyone, I just created a Facebook page for my channel content. So I'll leave the link to that in my description box too. All right, y'all. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, leave your comments down below. Or if any of you guys have any questions for Eric, leave them down below as well. And I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye.